Okay, let's talk about DaVinci Resolve 20. DaVinci Resolve 20 has a bunch of new AI features. There's a bunch of other features as well, but it seems like they really, really went down the AI train this time around. And honestly, CapCut, pfft, we used other tools for certain things, and there definitely, there was a reason to use CapCut. We used something called Veed.io as well. We used Eleven Labs for AI voiceover. There were other tools that we were using, and it seems like Blackmagic just took all of those tools and threw it into DaVinci. So I'm just gonna read off of this because honestly, there's so much to go through and I will not remember all the names, so here we go. One of the features is called IntelliScript. Essentially, you upload a script of, let's say, a narrative film that you just shot, and the AI will select the best takes, put them in the timeline, and then any alternate takes will be positioned on top of what the AI considers the best take and disable them. AI music editor. For backing tracks, for example, you can now adjust the song length and the AI will listen to the song and make the appropriate cuts where it makes the most sense. Audio assistant. You can use the AI audio assistant to essentially organize tracks based on dialogue, music, or sound effects. It will go through all the audio tracks, label them accordingly, and then do a mix based on that organization. Voice convert. You can use AI to change someone's voice on screen. So if I wanted to sound more like a British man or an Australian woman, for example, you can use these AI tools to change someone's voice. There are four voices built into DaVinci, two male, two female. However, the more interesting use case of this, I would say, is if you're recording audio in a subpar environment with tons of noise, you can then upload, for example, my own voice into DaVinci, it will take that recording, listen to the original audio, and replace it with the sound of my voice in a better recorded environment. Dialogue matching. So this is similar to color matching, where if you have one clip that looks very different than another, it'll color match to the reference clip. Dialogue matching, essentially, if you have one clip that's very reverberant, and then another one that's recorded in a studio, you can choose one as the reference and make the other one sound like that one. You can use PSD files in DaVinci now. You can open the different layers and manipulate them differently. AI multicam smart clip. So this is, for example, if you have a podcast with three different cameras, each on a different person, AI multicam smart clip will go through the footage, it will realize who is the person speaking and edit to match whoever's speaking at that time. AI super scaling allows you to enhance video by two, three, or four times for additional zoom, sharpness, and noise reduction. AI set extender. If I wanted to have more space on top or to the left and to my right, I could zoom into this frame and then AI set extends to have more room. For Fusion, there's a bunch of improvement for deep images and layers. The color tab now has something called AI magic mask, which is similar to in Photoshop. For example, if you wanted to select someone's face or select an object on screen, you can now do that within DaVinci and it tracks that object throughout the scene. Fairlight has improved audio tools as well, such as better automation tools. You can change channel automation. They no longer all have to be global. You can change it per track. You can use AI to remove silences and silent sections. There's also a new checkerboard feature, which for example, if you upload a single stereo file of two people speaking, the AI will analyze it and then checkerboard it to two individual tracks based on the timbre of people's voice so that you can manipulate the sound separately. And lastly, as far as these cool AI tools are concerned in DaVinci Resolve, there's an EQ matcher and a level matcher. So you can choose a reference clip and then match the other clip to it based on EQ or based on level. On the deliver page, there's also a quick export dialog box that you can create your own presets. And also there is a new Vision Pro output because they, well, they have this whole new Ursa Cine immersion camera, so they also have a, a new export option for Apple Vision Pro. Oh, and in DaVinci, there's also a new keyframes tab, the top left, huge. I mean, honestly, I always felt that the keyframe workflow in DaVinci was fine if you didn't make it too complex, but now there's a whole tab dedicated to it. You can click it and it's much easier to visualize. Love that. Thank you guys so much for watching and let me know in the comments below what was the product or update that you were the most excited for. See you.